Sometimes the simplest sounding questions turn out to be the more complicated ones. And this is a very good example. Somebody asked me, what do I reckon the chances are that Earth-like planets could be out there with Earth-like creatures on them? And my immediate reaction is, well, what do you really mean when you say words such as Earth-like? What does an Earth-like planet mean to you? What does the term Earth-like creature mean to you? Because I can quite easily imagine that life, as a process, might well be ubiquitous in the universe. My gut feeling says it is, but how, what do I know? But imagine it is. Then, if life on other planets, on alien planets, had evolved to create life forms that we would recognize as having agency, in other words, you know, for want of a better word, things like animals, because you can't really use that term on alien life, but anyway, that's, I'll get to that later. Then I could imagine that evolution would have a tendency to converge on certain body plans that would make sense on certain types of planets. So in other words, say you had planets that were bathed in starlight, in sunlight, whatever their local star is, then I could imagine that you might, evolution might have a natural tendency to evolve towards body plans with eyes. So I can imagine that an alien could have a body plan that at least to us as an observer would make sense. You would look at the creature and you'd say, well, that looks like its head. It looks like it's, like it's got eyes to see with. It looks like it has appendages, limbs for want of a better word, to manipulate things with, other limbs to move with. So you could recognize it as a basic agent, an animal, perhaps. But is that enough to say that's Earth-like? I wouldn't say so. And then you need to start thinking about what actually the term Earth-like really means. And then it starts getting very complicated, because even if we look at Earth, if you look at the planet as it is today, it's the result of a 4.7 or whatever billion years or history of accidents, effectively. According to some hypotheses, we got hit by an object about the size of Mars, which then led to the formation of our current moon, although that hypothesis has since been discredited, I believe. But anyway, something happened to produce this Earth-Moon system, which is very unique. Something happened to when life eventually evolved to settle down on a very specific cocktail of chemicals, including what we now know as DNA, the four amino acids that it's based on, proteins. We don't know enough, enough about that chemistry yet to be able to conclude that maybe this particular cocktail of ingredients is inevitable once a chemical soup gets complicated enough. Or maybe it needs a geologically active planet with, um, what do you call it, with uh, heat vents in the oceans and whatever else to make a particular setup happen in exactly the right way so it leads to what we would recognize as DNA, its four amino acids, and the normal cocktail of proteins that we would see in life everywhere on this planet. So, at the moment, my gut feeling again would say that the chances of that particular chemical combination to occur on another planet, I would imagine is quite rare, even if for whatever reason, life as a process could be ubiquitous in the universe, life based on our chemistry might be unique already. But maybe it is likely enough. Then life on this planet, on the other planet, would have to come up with the same tricks 
that our life has come up with come up with at some point something would have to evolve photosynthesis and what are the chances of that happening it's a very kind of awkward combination of tricks that makes up photosynthesis as we see it here on earth it's a combination of two steps that are you know there's no real reason why those steps should be combined in the way they have other than by pure accident one day several billion years ago this did happen here on earth but maybe it's something that is so rare that it might not have happened on other planets but again maybe it is something that ultimately will turn out to be inevitable but then after photosynthesis and photosynthesizing life pumping the atmosphere full of oxygen which is not a natural state for an atmosphere to be in not a natural state for an, an atmosphere based on inorganic chemistry to be based on then life would still have to come up with the same sort of tricks maybe the planet would have to go through a snowball stage like our snowball earth apparently did at some stage before it could lead to this explosion of diversity that we saw in our early history about 500 or so million years ago and maybe then after that happened the right environmental uh, situation would have to arise in order to make the same types of body plants prevail that did pre prevail after we had our explosion of diversity here on this planet and after that we would have to have the same sort of accidents that led to life going onto land and evolving into lineages such as reptiles and fish and uh, mammals and birds and you catch my drift so it really depends on what you consider earth-like to be the chances that we will ever find an alien mammal, an alien reptile, an alien fish even, I would reckon as being so close to zero as to be negligible. That's my position. Life itself, life as a generic process, my gut feeling says, is everywhere in the universe. Life as we know it, only here.